Marsha. I was uh, with her in the Hot Peaches Company and so forth here in New York. But one of the great moments of her life, I think, was uh, when she was arrested uh, for assaulting two police officers and prostitution, and she was put in uh, city court. Unfortunately, she got a woman judge, which was a kiss of death for a drag queen. And there must have been 10 to 20 of us in the courtroom who were there to try to get her bail and everything, if there was bail given. And uh, Marsha came out in a dress, short dress, but no wig. And this woman judge, you could tell, was intimidated. And uh, two police officers suddenly walked in. One had a sling on and rib bandages, and another one had a bandage on his head and a black eye. <laughs> and the judge looks at the police and looks at Marsha. I mean, these were two big, beefy cops, New York cops. And said, officers, what happened? <laughs> and et cetera. I'm, I'm making this short. Anyway, the uh, judge said, what happened? The officer said, well, we were trying to apprehend this person prostituting on 43rd and 8th Avenue. And we were attacked by that person who was carrying two bricks in a very large handbag. All right, well, that was their side. Now, Marsha comes up, and the judge says, uh, you're listed as being on welfare and having extra money and food stamps and subsidized housing. Why were you prostituting out there? And Marsha said, uh, I needed to get a tombstone for my husband. And the judge said, I beg your pardon? She said, I needed a tombstone for my husband. Well, the court all started breaking up and stuff. She said, why did you assault the officers? She said, I didn't know. They didn't bring out no badge or nothing. She said, I just thought they were trying to rob my ducat, so I hit him, Your Honor. And the judge thinks for a while, the court's still laughing, and she's banging her gavel. Short, nasty old woman with gray hair, I remember. And Marsha had this very famous prostitute lawyer who had a kind of a beret, and uh, she was kind of older and walked bow legged and she was real tough. And uh, the judge finally thought a minute and turned around to Marsha and said, Well, why were you prostituting? Marsha said, I told you, I wanted a tombstone for my husband. And the judge said, well, what happened to this alleged husband that he died? Marsha Johnson, E. Johnson, Malcolm Michaels, looked the judge dead in the eye and said, pig shot him? That was it. The audience went berserk. The judge went, bang, 90 days, right? Fuck the cops, she didn't care about that, she just went 90 days. And then the prostitution lawyer was real hot, she was uh, really good for them. Um, turned around and said, uh, we demand that she have a, a mental check at Bellevue or this and that. And so at least uh, she didn't go out to the island or anything. She, uh, uh, she was put in a mental hospital out in Judah land somewhere. And we finally went out and got custody of her, uh, me, Charlie Shively, and I'm trying to think some more Bostonians who happened to be in town uh, for a Herbert Hunker uh, poetry and Gore Vidal poetry. And uh, but Marcia, I knew her from the get go when she lived on 14th Street near the, uh, what was that? Jesus, it was some kind of generator factory and stuff. And Marcia was a dear and loving friend. And I'm telling you, just as soon as I'm looking at you, she always believed that suicide was blowing out your candle to be relit in another room. And that girl would not do it in a million years and trust me. She stayed in my home in Boston. I was in hot peaches with her. And I knew her a long, long time. But that court appearance was one of the greatest, most humorous, most loving, and most political moments faggots could face because she loved her husband. She didn't want that tombstone for me. And she wasn't afraid to look at that judge in the eye and say, pig shot him. 
Okay, what's your name? Oh, Lee, like Lee Stone from Boston, Massachusetts. 